So today, it's Friday, it's noon, we're painting. Um, I mentioned last week I might do something ocean oriented, um, just try and kind of change things up, try and not repeat myself too much. So it's it gets a little boring. Uh, I looked for do if I had a suggestion to do a nocturne, which I eventually will do. I just have to find an image that I think I can turn into a nocturne comfortably. Um, the other suggestion I have is boats, and I'm looking for those. As of now, I haven't found any that I really like. These are a couple of images that I pulled up last week that I kind of liked, and I thought, eh, let's do something along this line. I love this splash characteristic here. Um, I like certain aspects of the rocks back here. That's why I have this one up here. This is my main focus here, is the splash. I also like the wave back here. I may throw a rock right in here. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to kind of wait and see how it feels as I move along in this piece. Some interesting um, foam on the water back in this area. I love the, the, this, this kind of wonderful kind of pea green up in here as kind of as the sun comes through the waves. Now, which way is the sun coming? It's one of the things I analyze, whether I'm painting on location, or whether I'm painting from reference. And in this case, it's very important that I understand which way the sun is coming from. Well, the, you can tell I'm using this one primarily. This, here's our shadow. It's going almost directly in this direction, which tells us the sun is coming from that direction. So it's illuminating any bumps and, and little peaks and, that you see on the rock, the sun is hitting. And as it turns away, the sun is not hitting. All right. So that's kind of important. The other thing is, if you look at this water, this part of it is in shadow. This part of it is in light. So we kind of always keep that in mind. I love the shadow. It comes here goes across and kind of envelops the uh, the feeling of the water. The reason I like this one better than this one, I love this composition of the movement of the water coming in and a little bit of the reflection. So I've talked enough, told you my thoughts, which is I, I usually go through this, these kind of mental gymnastics on my own. And um, so I've kind of more or less verbalized it. So let's start with, uh, let's start with something and make it, work. I'm not going to draw today. I'm actually just going to start painting. Uh, don't know why I decided to do that. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just feel like I'm in the mood to just paint and not worry about the drawing side of it. Uh, so what I'm going to begin with is I'm going to separate right on. Uh, because I need a brush. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I stepped away for a second. Uh, I had a brush that I had just cleaned. Um, and it was still wet and I didn't like it because it was still wet, which, which I had to mention that. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, if your brushes are still wet, don't sit and dip them in oils. Let them dry out. Um, I usually clean my brushes at the end of any painting session, which generally is the evening. For me, lately, it's been about seven o'clock. Um, and in that time, I kind of clean my brushes and call it, a, call it a, a night. So one of my just cleaned this morning, and that's why. But I've got another kind of a sloppy old brush that I kind of want to start with because I'm not going to draw. We're just going to start painting. Now, one of the things that I'm, I'm going to look at is the value, which I didn't plan this. The value of this and color is not that different than the warm sand. It's, this is a little too yellow, but it's in the same value range. So what I will do initially is use this as this color and I'll relate everything to it. So I already have a color and a value down on my board which is similar to something in my painting. Now the value of the sky is similar, it just happens to be bluer. So I think we're, let's start with this big dark shape. So we're gonna take a little asphalt and that's pretty dark, a little bit of ultramarine and I'm gonna warm it up a little bit with some uh, alizarin, maybe, maybe a touch of white so I don't go all the way to my complete dark immediately, um, which is sometimes a mistake that I've made and that, uh, different people make from time to time. And I'm working on a piece of 18 by 24 gessoed hardwood. So let's look at the, this shadow starts at about the one third mark, which is about here. So we're just gonna put that in and it comes over, well, at here it's above. I was looking at the wrong piece, which I have been known to do. So we're gonna start right here and we're gonna keep this kind of thin and brushy. And if some of that comes through, great. I, I actually like the thin to thick look anyway. So uh, if that happens, wonderful. This comes almost up to midpoint. And where is 
where is this? This point, I gotta quit looking at this. Where is this point? This point is a little over halfway. That's a little over halfway right there. And I, the reason I, I don't wanna extend beyond this is I want this sweep, this compositional sweep. So right at this point, which is above half, we're gonna come down and we're just gonna block it in. These are all, uh, you know, I call them placeholders. I call them approximations. Uh, I do that because I don't want to be overcommittal right now because I might be wrong. Goes back to my old, one of my favorite sayings. You guys heard it over and over. Those of you that have tuned in before is um, it's only wrong if you leave it. Don't be afraid to be wrong. Um, so we're going to come down. Where does it? Down about here, then it comes down, over, down, back, up. You notice I'm just guessing. I'm going, ah, it goes here. And I'm just putting it in there, knowing that I may, I, I should I won't even say I may, that I will adjust it because I know it's not going to be right on. I'm gonna, uh, what I want is to be close. No, what I want is to be right. I shouldn't say that. But I know I won't be. But I'll be close enough. So I'm going to add just a tad of white to that picture, just a little bit, not much. And we're going to kind of bring it up here, over, down. I'd rather paint too much in than too little. So this is about in here. That feels pretty good. Then we got a little peak that comes up to about this point, about there. Maybe a touch more white into it. It cools it off. White will do two things. Besides lightening it, it will cool your colors. textual qualities. Okay, so there's this sloppy version of the rock that I see, all right? So it's also casting a shadow, right? The shadow, I can see, you guys can't see it, but I can see it here. So, and that shadow is similar, but it's bluer. So I added a little bit of white, I'm adding a little ultramarine to the same pot that I was just working out of. Pretty good. Maybe I want a little. Well, let's, let's try that. What the heck? Uh, that's pretty close. I like when I'm close. Um, at least right now, I think it's close. It may not be. <laughs> By the time I get further into this, I may realize no, that's wrong. And that's part of being an artist, being wrong. Sometimes you can make wrong work, by the way, just so you guys know. It is, it is possible. So wrong sometimes can work for you because you'll do unexpected things and you'll go, hey, I kind of like the way that came out. And that's what we, what I like to call part of your repertoire. Something you think about as you progress into um, other aspects of your future endeavors. So that comes back right to this point comes up here, comes over here. So these are kind of nice, uh, good approximate placeholders. Good is relative, by the way. I'm using the word good just to make myself feel better. A little darker, uh, and that's generally cast shadows in general. Cast shadows tend to be darker where they emanate from. So wherever that cast shadow starts, generally will be darker. And as it moves away, and out, particularly outdoors, by the way, as it moves away, two things happen. It gets a little lighter and it catches more sky. That's why you see it at this point, it feels quite brown and dark. At this point, it feels very influenced by the sky, very blue. So that's why we kind of have a color like that up there. Now, there is also another little color, it tends to be a little darker. So I added a little bit more brown and blue to the mixture I just painted with. And we're gonna go right here, right there. Now, one of the advantages is I haven't gone all the way to as dark as I can go. So I can still go darker in this area. All right, so that's kind of the arena that I've kind of left for myself. Now, I went a little bit more at the bottom but let's move on to other areas. Let's, this is gonna be a lot cooler I'm, and I'll worry about that at a later time. I, but I'll keep that in the back of my head that I know that that has to happen. Back, 
in here, that's going to have to get a little bit more cool. So what are we going to do? Let's get this. Let's lay that sky in. Let's move to the opposite extreme. We've done the foreground. I think what I'm doing one more thing in the foreground with the blue and the brown. I just as I glance down, this bothered me. I want this dark coming over here more. Okay. Now that's all. So I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just. I know I'm not right exactly 100% of the time, but I'm close enough. It's got. It's got kind of the look of that, the abstraction of that. Let's get the sky in. So slightly clean my brush, add a lot of white to it, and ultramarine. That's the only blue I have out. I'll go through my palette. Titanium white, uh, Naples yellow, yellow ochre, cad orange hue, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green. I actually have a little uh, burnt umber and uh, asphalt from laid out. So that's my, that's my palette, and I'm sticking to it. And I'm going to take a little bit of ochre and bring it into the blue. So it, it greens it up just a little bit. That may be a little too. No, that's pretty good. God. I must be getting better at this because I, I, I'm coming closer on my first guess. I always like that. Just, I like it. And I'm kind of amazed when that happens. I don't expect it. I try for it. And any students, any of you artists out there that have ever taken a color class and you go through this whole arduous, sometimes painful mixtures of colors, that's what this is all about. It's teaching you sense, color sensitivity so that when you get into paintings, you can come closer in your first guess. So we, you can go, we can all go kicking and screaming. I happen to be one of these students that actually really liked the color class that I took from George Harris. I really liked it. Uh, I took it first semester when I was at art school and um, enjoyed the heck out of it. I really, you know, I had people kicking and screaming in that class that didn't like it. But man, I, can't, I, I worked my ass off, excuse me for saying ass, uh, in that class. Let's get that sky a little darker as it moves this way because I want that splash to be able to stand out pretty good. Okay, that's pretty. Now let's get the kind of beautiful blue green water. Now it's not intense. It's not intense, but it is leaning that way. So I'm going to take in the sky mixture, I just added more ultramarine and green. And, and it's way too dark, I can tell you right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Naples yellow light to lighten it. And it made it a little greener than I wanted. So I'm adding more blue. And you just counter mix those. This might be right and it might be wrong. That's close. That's what we're shooting for right now, everybody. Close. Shouldn't say that. We're shooting for right on the money, but close will close will, will suffice. So we're gonna put kind of the feeling of that water line in right there. And I'm gonna kind of blur it into the sky so I don't have a super hard edge there. In the distance you don't want, even though. It may appear that way to you. You don't want that super hard edge. Number one, I'll tell you why. I don't want to just tell you don't do it. There is a reason for that. It, it makes, it draws your eye. A hard edge draws your eye. And we don't want to draw our eye back here. We want this to be a very important part of the painting, but we don't want it to draw our eye. So the splash occurs, and I've got this just about right. Now I can overlap and get that. Now there's a little bit of water that peeks out behind, which I see it here and here. So, and I kind of like that. That's what I call continuity. In other words, this continues over here. All right. So we've got a pretty good start to that. I'm gonna leave the concept of that splash going on. So I'm gonna abandon that for a little bit and we have it down in here. Now this water in here gets a little grayer. So I'm gonna take the same color, add white to it and add a little umber. Little umber, maybe a little ochre. And right about in here, let's see what this is like. Eh, I'm not crazy about it. Added more blue and more white. Let's try it again. We want to kind of leave. Yeah, that feels still not going to add some cad orange light hue to it. It just it felt too colorful, too blue. And there's it really. So if you go down about here, 
That feels better to me right there. It's a little grayer. It works its way over into some beautiful blues, but right about this point, it has a little bit of a grayness. And if we want to get a little bit of that in. Um, bright color everywhere is not going to make your painting better. All right. It makes your painting like a three weeks, three ring circus. Think about that. What I mean by that is you look everywhere. Everywhere has equal amount of importance. So what we want to do is begin to develop an order to it. Or as the contemporary terms, a lot of people use the word hierarchy. But it's basically what you want to do is you want to build that order of importance. So you don't start real strong everywhere. All right. So we're just kind of feeling our way through this right now. I'm going to try and see if I can get a little of this kind of beautiful pea green in there. That's one of the prettiest colors. So I'm going to take, start with Naples yellow. I'm going to take a little ultramarine to it and a little bit of green. That looks pretty good that I just mixed right there. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. Let's see. I'm a little lighter than I want to be is all. A little bit. A little bit that I just darkened it just a little bit and kind of abstractly put that in there. Again, think of it as a placeholder, guys. Think of right about here, right about here, comes down. Paint over, paint too much rather than try and puzzle paint. Okay, what do I mean by puzzle paint? That's where you, everything is mapped out almost like a paint by number and you just paint up to that point. You don't go beyond it. Paint through things. It'll give your painting more vitality. It'll give your painting more interest rather than always trying to paint right up to an edge and keeping that edge so, so overly defined that it, it just uh, isn't working. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of leave it at that for right now. We're gonna move this paint down in here, paint through that white over in here, get that pea green color. See if I can begin to get a little darker and let it kind of transition into that wave right about there, okay? So we're starting to get a feel for it. Oh, what else are we gonna do? Let's take, again, this is, this is not even close to the white that we're going to use up here. And that's a warm white, by the way. We're going to build this white in two to three stages, by the way. But we're going to, let's start in with this simple base, kind of beautiful blue tone. All right. So again, we pick up our white, pick up our ultramarine. And I'm looking at that. It's got a little bit of green in, the ultra, in that. Not a lot, not as much as other areas, but it does have a little bit. And it's quite light. So I think I'm maybe a little too dark. Here now that I look at it, I'm going to try this. Nope, yep, it's a little too green. So what I do, I threw more ultramarine. Now, as soon as I threw ultramarine, it darkened it. So which means I have to add some white. Let's try it again. Feels a little better right there. I'm going to add a little medium because the paint is feeling quite dry. And we're going to take it from here, and it gets lighter over here. I like that edge. It's my favorite edge in the whole painting right now. <laughs> got to have these. You got to have these little parts that when you hit them, you go, "Oh yeah." It's like, "Oh, geez, finally, I got it the way I wanted." It's like a painting orgasm. You love it when it happens. It's just, oh man, that's good. Feels right. Just perfect. Just, you know. It's what I was, that's what I was trying for. It's that kind of a thing. You know, it's like you, you want it to feel really uh, like you got, you were shooting for something and it worked. Like a little rock. I think I may stay with this paint, this piece. I kind of like this. This rock's getting away. So I think I might even not just almost abandon this. I might look at it here and there for color. But for right now, as, as the water moves over, the dark water, it gets a little lighter and a little warmer. What does that mean? Lighter means white. Warmer, let's look at it. A little duller. So I'm gonna throw a little cat orange light into it, believe it or not, and we're gonna try this. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more white. Let's try it again. And what are we doing? We wanna come right from here. That rock I'll worry about later. And it ends about here. So I'm gonna take a little Naples into that color 
and a little bit more warm. And we're gonna do, that feels a little bit better. One of the things people are afraid of when they paint water is putting warms in it because you think water, well, it's blue. Well, water isn't necessarily blue. Water gets the blue really kind of from the sky. It may, it may be some of the minerals in the water, but mainly that's where it gets it. Now, as we move over in here, the darks in here, which aren't as dark, but they're much warmer, much more neutral. So I'm gonna take the same color, I'm gonna mix white into it. I'm gonna mix some ochre into that white, and I'm gonna try this color right here. And what we're gonna try is right about in here. Now, where does that line up in the painting? Lines up about here. Nope, it's still too blue. So what do I do? More white, more ochre. Let's try it again. That's a little better, more ochre. Right again. That makes me feel good. Okay. Now, when you're painting this kind of stuff on location, what I usually tell people, we've done workshops where I've done this on location. And what I try and tell people, don't, don't just start painting, sit and watch. Just watch it for a little while. Watch it happen several times. Each time you see it, you will notice other aspects. As you notice those, make a mental note. All right because that's what you're gonna do. You also have to decide at what point, see a photo will, will do this for you. A photo you stops everything. So it, it's like, oh, that's, that's the moment I wanna paint. But if you're painting on location, it doesn't stop, it continues. It's like rushing water in a river. It's like anything like that. You have to sit and study it for a little bit. And at some point, you're gonna feel like, now's the time, now is when I'll do it. And that's when you kind of move on it. But since we're painting, and since I don't have a white underneath, it really makes it actually more helpful. So we started this pretty much, I wanna kinda of wanna get some of this going up a little bit more. And it, as it goes up to this point, it lightens and it warms up a little bit. It's not quite as pretty of a blue. So we just kind of, kind of smudge that color. And over here, right here, right there, Right there, it gets warmer. White, let's try some alizarin into it. All right, that took it really warm, probably warmer than I want. So I'm gonna throw a little Naples, but we're gonna try it anyway. Now, let's try this. Feels pretty good, that feels, that, that feels, I can live with that. It's a line I use too often. Okay, let's go right along here, figure that out. That's gonna be right down in here. It's kind of a neutral, maybe a little bit more warm than neutral. Down here, this is down here. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of lay those two rocks in because if nothing else, they're gonna be placeholder. Now I don't want them as dark as this. So what I did is I took my asphalt, mixed some white or Naples with it, either one, that's gonna lighten it. Took some blue to neutralize it so it doesn't stay too warm. And we're going to start with this rock. Maybe a little, maybe a little darker than I want. Uh, I don't know. I just threw some more Naples into that color. So where does that end up? That lines up about here. So I'm probably over a little further, I probably have it. There we go. And the other rocks just slightly darker because it's in front of it. So a little bit more asphalt and a little bit more blue. And let's pop that baby in. I don't want it as dark as the foreground rock, you guys. Don't want it as dark as this. Even though it may appear that way, even if you're on location, it may appear that way. But you are creating an illusion. So in order to create an illusion, if you think about it, when a magician creates an illusion, he's tricking you, he's tricking you, right? When an artist creates an illusion, they're tricking you, they're tricking the viewer. They're making this feel like it's uh, in front or that it's further back than this. So you have to be used, you employ these kind of, of devices to create that illusion. Illusion, very important word. Okay, 
So we've got the placeholder of those two rocks. Now let's start, let's plan that. Oh, there's a rock here too. Now that's, you can see, this is misted way back compared to this. So I wanted at least as light as that, this back rock. And where does that sit? Well, it sits right here. Now it's not dark enough because it's gotta be darker than the water. So it's gotta be, you gotta hit that in between. It's gotta be darker than the water, yet lighter than the rock in front of it. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna, that's better. Now we're using all these little placeholders and hoping that they're in the right spot. If they're not, if we've moved something, it's nature, man. Those rocks don't have to be exactly where they are. In fact, if, when I paint a location, if I don't like where something's lining up, I just move it. You know, you get to play God. Okay. Let's take and let's get this kind of water going. What is that? That's pretty light. So I'm going to use a lot of white and kind of mix it into a, some of the warms that I was using over in here. Let's start. I want to find it right about here. here. Oh, I got a fugitive, fugitive hair. That comes from working with a crummy brush. But all, what also comes from working with a crummy brush is kind of the, the, a little bit more freedom and not as much precision. I want precision at the end. I don't care if I have a lot of precision right now. We're going to pull that up. Nowhere near as white as I want to go. I'll just mix white and a little medium into the into this kind of color and we'll, a lot of, I see a lot of yellow now. And you'll see this when you're painting a location too, by the way, it's not just working here. You'll see it if you really look, this is why you want, want to study what you're painting. You don't just don't want to paint it. You want really want to look at it. All right, let's keep moving. Let's take that same color. Let's move it from beyond this point, right about here, down, and about the rock, it starts to this direction. All right, so let's kind of push that. And then it gets kind of a beautiful blue lavender. So again, with my white and a little bit of blue, my white's, the white I'm using today is a titanium and it's a little stiffer than I'm used to. So I have, whenever I use a stiffer paint, I need to add a little bit of medium to it. In this case, the solvent-free gel. I have two forms of solvent-free gel I'm using, you guys. One of them is in this, they get from the tube and then I bought a, a bottle. And I, so I'm dipping into the bottle. <laughs> I just realized what I said. Um, if you, know, if you dip in the bottle just enough, you can really loosen up, by the way. <laughs> That's one thing I've never been accused of is dipping into the bottle, but I just announced it to the world. So I, I keep I keep darkening this because I see it get a little I see it get warmer too. So I'm throwing a little as I'm darkening, I'm using alizarin and sometimes even a little bit of a cat orange. This time I went way too far with it. But let's see what happens. Is the bottle um, solvent more like? The solvent is a little bit more fluid. So here it is like here. Kind of yeah, it's a little more like a liquid. Um, where the, where the, um, the solid is easier to kind of take on location because um, you don't need a cup or anything for it. It's basically <laughs> just in tube form and you squeeze it out. It's still, it gives you the same kind of looseness. In fact, I just picked some up now. Uh, it's a little violet. We're gonna break, I, these are kind of violet as I move down here. A little bit, maybe I'm gonna throw a touch more blue into that color and as I do, the blue darkens it. So I've got to compensate with white. And what does that do? It comes down here. That's too dark, I, I know it is.
Right about there, right, right about there. We want it to come this way, down, and over, and over. Now, if it looks like I'm off in color, uh, I am. I don't care. I've got the value right. The value is key. Remember, always, always the value is the key. Sometimes being off in color, you can create a little bit more, for lack of a better word, magic. Now I'm going to go a little bit more blue with that same color. Maybe I'm going to touch a green. And I'm going to test something. Too dark. Now we're going to go from here back. Maybe a little too pretty of a blue. Doesn't really bother me a lot. Uh, we're going to bring it down. We're going to come down here. Here. Let's see where we're at here. I'm about 30 minutes into it, everybody. So it's one of the things when you don't draw, you'll get your, obviously you're into your painting a lot, a lot quicker. Um, the one thing that I will say about drawing is when I do do things like architect, when I do do, um, when, when I do things like architecture, uh, I really need the drawing. Uh, I've done it the other way and the drawing just helps me solve some of the problems earlier. That's all. Oh, do, do. So I, well, I haven't stepped back and I think I'm a little off in some of my drawing. Um, organically, when you're dealing with anything organic, if you're off in your drawing, it's not gonna hurt a lot. You can, you can rearrange things, so to speak. Now we definitely wanna show the difference from it going from light into shadow, which means I probably have to lighten up the light. So let's see what happens if I take that light and make that a little bit lighter at this point. That tends to feel like a shadow. Now, that shadow needs that continuity of moving over onto the sand. So it's got that blue, similar to this color. And it comes out this way. So let me, I'm stepping back. Okay, it's working fair. Which truthfully at the midpoint, if you can get it working fair, you're in good shape. And I'm not at midpoint yet. Okay, so we're gonna leave that alone. Now remember, I said this is similar to the sand color, which it is, but this water comes around here and then comes out and we get that beautiful, a little bit more of a golden color. So I'm gonna take a little, uh, that's almost a raw sienna, which I don't have out, but I can take a burnt umber and I can mix it in with my uh, ochre and come up with pretty close to a raw sienna type of a color. Yep, maybe a little more orange in it. Okay, and that's right here. Again, what you're doing in the beginning is you're setting everything up to go to, to go to your next stage, which is what painting's all about anyway. It's all about going through the stages appropriately. If you do, it'll work. And if you don't, you're gonna fight it. It's gonna drive it. That's where the frustration occurs. So again, standing back, it feels pretty good. It feels kind of like what I'm looking at, I don't know if it feels exactly like what I'm looking at, but it feels kind of like what I'm looking at. So let's go back into some of these whites now, okay? Uh, behind the rock, which I can lighten up a lot. I just went back to one of the lighter colors I already had mixed up. So it's no, nothing real tricky. Because I don't want to make the rock a lot darker. Because if I do, I'm gonna bring it too forward. I, I may, as I move towards completion, want to amplify the darkness of that rock a little bit. Not guaranteeing that I want to, but I might. And now I'm looking for warms in the shadows, for example, right here. Warmer. 
a little, I got this up here already a little warmer. Let's start in with some near whites right now. So took my white, mixing it into some ochre and into a little bit of the gray violet I already have there. And it's pretty stiff. Again, I've mentioned my whites are a little stiffer than I want them. So I'm gonna kind of, not pure white yet. Because this white back here is nowhere near as this white up here. So you've got the several levels of what we might consider white. Use that brush differently to create effects. Get a little bit of just highlation on a wave back here, just barely like letting my brush touch. I don't like what I just did. Okay. Standing back, feel pretty good about it, yeah, so to speak. Uh, let's build those whites. So we're gonna take white, back into the color I was just using, and I'm gonna bring some Naples yellow into that white. And I'm, I have a little dirt in the brush, I have not cleaned that brush thoroughly. So if I press down hard, I, I bring up some of that dirt from the ferrule of the brush. And I can start in with whites that are, now I just wanna show you something. When I just put down, looks quite white, but I wanna put a pure white right next to it to see, see where I'm at. So that, no, that color. Now what, here's a pure white. So hopefully you can see the difference. It's, I don't want to, I don't want to, that's what I will finish with. I will finish with more of those whites. I won't start with them. So what we're going to do is going to use this brush in kind of a scumbly way, kind of a little bit of this way. And if I get too much going on in what I consider the, um, if I go over my shadows too much, I can go back into the shadows and put them back in. So that's not white. Naples in, and white into kind of a mucky mixture I already have down. Um, and it really saves me so that I can go white at the very end. A lot of yellow in this color, a lot, of, I see it. And so I'm gonna, I keep adding a little bit more of the, um, of the Naples. Naples is a really nice light color. And if you use a pure yellow, it's gonna look like someone kind of peed in the water. And obviously we don't want that. It's like when people wanna put light on snow and I see them and they put, use too much of a, of a cad type of a yellow. Um, what happens is it looks like someone urinated there. And I remember, I remember from art school teachers bringing that point up, and uh, I still remember, it, obviously. So it's amazing how much you remember from school. Those, are, those, are, if, any, if any of you went to art school, you probably experienced the same thing over and over again. That teachers say, hopefully, people will do that with me someday. People go, yeah, I remember when uh, I was in class and he said this. Yeah, I think you. And sometimes I've had people quote back to me things that I've said, and I went, did I really say that? I don't remember saying that. Um, I can see that's got a lot of yellow in it, a lot of Naples. We, we want that, I don't like that. We want that edge to be kind of crummy. And if I go too far with it, I'm just gonna grab secondary brush to brush back into it a little bit. We want those edges, when you talk about lost and found edges, this is a beautiful example of lost and found edges. You want them to get lost, you want, and then you want to refine them, drag your brush down to get it working again. So we're getting a feeling of that splash going. And I, now that I step back, I've got the color where I want it, which makes me so happy, I can't tell you because I know I've set myself up. If I'm too light here, I don't have enough color, then I've got to come back and add color. So I've kind of set myself up really well. Now this, 
if I can keep it where it's at, or I can bring it over to this point where it's at. I'm going to bring it over. So I'm going to, which is fun. Now I paint back into that kind of blue green area and you get a different characteristic when you paint wet into wet or a la prima. It's one of the beauties about a la prima. It's one of the things that I talk about when you guys, this is why you don't want to paint up to edges, paint through edges. So you're forced to do some overlapping. I've often used, like that's too dark now. I can really see it. It's because of this was already a little dark. So I'm going to, re I'm going to recharge that in a second. And I'm just going to let the color that I mix into that brown. So it becomes, now I see it get kind of blue. It's got some really interesting color variations in here. So I'm letting it mix into the shadow color. And in, in doing so, I'm getting some in-between tones. Step back. I also have in my head that I know I, I'm going to go lighter eventually. I want to leave, say, the last 10, 15 minutes to really punch the whites, really, really, uh, you know, really push them. So you're setting up for that. It's like, <laughs> It's like putting highlights in the eye when you're painting a figure. I see pe people want, they want to finish that eye off. Man, I want to get that. Look at those beautiful highlights in the eye. And so you go for them and you put them in at the wrong time. So now you have to paint around them if you want to add any sort of nuances to the painting. Accidentally, I picked up some orange and it's coming out and I don't mind it at all. Excuse me. That's what happens at the very end of a cold, which thankfully I've gotten over. So I see it get cooler right here. So I just went back to some of the blues that I had done before. I can pull the rock back over it. And I notice on the foam, I'm going to go a little darker with the blue, same color, but and maybe a little alizarin into it so it doesn't quite an acidity of a blue, but we're going to bring the shadow right there. Good shadow. Whew. Like it when it works. So happy when it works. So let's go back to the, let's kind of clear some of the pigment out of the brush that I was just using. Go back to the Naples and the white, mix it back into that color I was using, bring a little bit of medium into it. This time I use the solid, I mean, the solid medium. And let's kind of start to get some of this stuff in. Use that brush, let that brush. Now that's too dark. So before I go too far, I want to readjust that. Definitely readjust that. Same with this one, bring the over. I'm going to readjust it right now. I'm going to lighten that color. So with the same color I had in my brush, ochre, white, just a hint of a blue. Let's try this. Oh, that's going to help. A little bit more white, a little bit more warm. And there we go. We don't want a big jump here. It's a very soft jump. Now here's part of the reason why. You're getting this ocean spray. And that's some an ad for any product. But you're getting that spray from the ocean um, kind of working its way over. And so it's diffusing that value. That value is not as strong. So we want to make sure we get kind of the right look of that. And I see, I actually see brown, believe it or not, as we move up here and it gets a little darker. So I'm grabbing the same color I was just using and I'm just throwing some umber into it. And we're going to right up here, maybe a little darker, maybe a little asphaltum this time. Asphaltum is a little darker and a little warmer. And we're going to go right about here. No, nope, a little bit more. I'm sneaking up on it. I thought I had it. This may be better. That feels a little better. Okay, step back, still a little stronger than I want, but a lot better, a lot better than it was. And now I need to kind of come in with the white and take care of the splash again. Okay, let's 
begin to work it up in here a little bit. I'm going to take a, if I can, a smaller, I don't want to go real small, but I would like to find a number six. I think that's a six or it could be an eight. That's an eight. Yeah, let's stay with an eight. Um, take the same color. It's a wonderful rosemary eight. So control. And we're going to start to get some of the feeling of the movement of that foam. So I, I actually throw a little medium into the paint at this point. And if I get some of this in too strong, I will go back and paint what we would call the negatives. And same kind of color. And where do I see it? Right here, kind of splashes it, its way along here, a little up. Kind of, just barely let your brush dance on the surface. It just barely hits, the, hits those points. Get a little bit of the splash here. There's some really nice warm colors in there, which I don't have right now. I need them. So I'm going to go back to some warms and I'm going to push warms more. That's too dark. Of, it's a good warm, it's just a little too dark. Okay, set that down. You go back to this brush. Let's find this area right above the rock, right here. Just let that brush skip down. You're not going to paint all those nuances, particularly quickly. Even in, in, if you try and paint them even perfectly, you're going to drive yourself crazy and your painting is going to look too stiff. So we want to create the feeling of what's going on here without pick, over picking the detail. Very hard because people that like detail want to go right for that detail. They don't want to go through the setup for the detail. They want to go right for the refinement of that detail. That's a wrong way of thinking. Detail should happen at the end of a painting. At least that's my personal philosophy. So you may find other artists that disagree with that, but that's my personal philosophy. Detail, uh, when, I, when I use the word detail, I mean refinement. Right here, right here. Ah, it's too heavy handed. So what do I do? Take a clean brush, a little number two here. That's wet paint right here. So I can take this wet paint and just carve that back down, to create the shape I want. So you try for it. In your first stroke, if you don't get it, you just carve it until you do get it. Back in the deeper shadows, up in here, there's a little bit of foam, but it's not nowhere near as light. All right, now, this is quite light down in here. Eventually we want to get to that before I put the splash over it. So I'm going to look at my time. About, about 45 minutes, about just about halfway through. Just about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to fix that. We're going to bring this down about here. Oh, that look, that's a good color. Probably a little lighter than I wanted, but it's not bad. Not bad. I can always come in and darken a little bit and add, just let it work its way up. Okay. So we're building nuances. Nuances, important. I, I, if any of you guys have, have watched me do these things, I hope, hopefully, what you see is it begin to come together at the end. Sometimes, and it's like, People have written me and they've commented that 
you know, I, I didn't really realize what you're doing, but all of a sudden it just seemed to come together. Well, that's, that's the whole idea with painting that it's not gonna look exactly like you want it as a, at a finished stage right from the beginning. That's gonna happen as you move through the painting. It's, so it's one of these things, you don't get exactly what you want in that first layer. If you keep thinking of, keep thinking of stages or layers, if you, if you do that, you will, it'll work and you will not be as frustrated. I, use, I keep bringing up the word, this concept of being frustrated, and that's based on teaching and listening to a lot of students that I know are frustrated because it isn't doing exactly what they want it to do. And it just drives them crazy because maybe they watch an instructor and it looks like, oh yeah, that's what you do. And then you go to do it and it doesn't come out the same way. I, I've lived that. I've lived that. I understand completely. And what I found, it's because I wanted it to look perfect right at the beginning, not understanding that it had to, you have to build up to that point to where at the very end, it starts really working. But initially, it's, it's looking vague. And what I have found in, just in terms of teaching and talking to people is I usually tell people if it's, if you got it going, all right, let me put it this way. Let's say before you start, nothing's wrong, right? Absolutely, nothing's wrong with your painting. Everything is right on the money. And it's not until you start putting stuff down that you start questioning, oh my God, that isn't what I want, all right? And that's because you're judging it from a finish point of view right at the beginning. You're not doing a finish, you're doing a finish at the end. All right, keep that in mind. I, I, I can't stress that enough. It's super important that you understand that it's the end of the painting that is the finish, not the beginning. It's intellectually, it's easy to understand. I mean, you go, okay, got it. I did. I mean, when people told me, I got it. And then when I would do it, didn't work. You go, damn, why isn't it working? Well, it's because as you get into your painting, you start saying, oh, I, I just need to do this to make it look really finished. I just need to do this. All of a sudden you're overworking things that you don't need to overwork. Now we want the splash to begin to diffuse that water. So I, what I find is by using a brush like this and not trying to overpick it, I can convey that splash feel better than if I try to just overpick it. And if, if all the strokes go up and down, it doesn't work, right? So one of the things I begin to see is this warm in here is lighter than I have there. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna to take my Naples yellow, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the orange, and we're going to try and lighten it. That worked pretty good. It's a little oranger than I want, but we're going to work it, and we're going to bring it up in, into there. And I'm going to work it up here and down, maybe a little bit more of a, down about there, and maybe a little bit there. Actually, that works well. So sorry if I'm complimenting myself, but usually I do just the opposite. I'm a little too hard, but when it works, it works. All right, let's go back to the white Naples and the off white that I'm using. <laughs> Keep my eye on the time. We're okay. Kind of, I kind of where I want to be, and that scares me right there. And I don't have an excuse. When it, if it doesn't work at the end, then I go, oh, I, you know, I was right on time. I just blew it at the end. You don't want to blow it at the end. The end is when you want it to be just wonderful. Light touch. 
vary the pressure. Haven't talked about that enough. Vary the pressure on your brush for a different looks, different effects. Don't keep the same pressure. When you, you paint a wall in a house, you keep the same pressure. When you paint um, a landscape, you want to vary that pressure. So you come up with a different kind of effects because what you're doing, again, you're creating that illusion. And for that illusion to work, you can't just be heavy handed everywhere. You can be heavy handed at times because it calls for it. But there's times when you just want to be just light touch, just a light touch. And I'm using a very light touch now. Stepping back, feels a little heavy right here. Feels a little heavy, darkness. When I, when I use that word heavy, it has to do with being too dark. So let's try and lighten it up a little bit. Uh, that feels a little bit better. That's why I probably put some of that splash in a little sooner than I needed to. And we're getting a little bit more of that foam. Moving across. So Laurel has a question, any advice on doing a larger studio piece from your plein air study and photo reference? I'm sorry, I asked that question again, because I, I, I missed. The... Advice on doing a larger studio piece from your plein air study. I'll tell you what, you guys. One of these, I don't have photo reference on this, but one of these weeks, I'm going to do a large painting of this. From, from this, I don't have the photo reference, because I painted it plein air, and I never shot a photo of it. Um, my, my advice, use your plain air for, for more color reference and your um, any photo that you have, use that for accuracy of detail. But you may create certain things in your plain air that you like enough that you want to use for your finish. And that, that is not unusual. And I've worked from both. Um, I'm just trying to get those transition. That, the, that transitional tone, I might have seen that plain air, but I, I, it's very obvious when I look at it in the photo. Now, I didn't paint this. I painted this, this area, but not this specific. This happened to be a day I just, we took our dog out. So I wasn't painting. I was running and cavorting with the, our animal. So we're coming up with edges, with a look of soft transitions and edges. I really want to work on this and this. This, this we're going to really finish off with some nice whites towards the end. White and Naples mixed back together once again. And we're going to, we're going to continue. We're gonna bring this sweep down here, all right? And then we'll bring it over and really a little bit more white in there. We're gonna get that. It's a little thick and dry. And that's why I had to add some more medium. I felt the, the need for the medium and that's, that's something that you can't teach somebody. You have to paint enough to know when you, when you need to lighten up uh, the paint, it's too stiff. Uh, I've, I've worked with people um, often where I've worked with them and realized by your fighting, you're fighting the stiffness of the paint. You just need to loosen it up. And then I've worked, uh, I remember working with them um, at one of my workshops years and years ago. And we're talking maybe 25 years ago. Um, and I was working with somebody, the workshop that was having trouble and asked me if I helped them with a head. And 
it was some of the creamiest, most beautiful paint I've ever felt. And I've tried, I think it was called a company called Classic. And I've never found, but it was the paint was just what I would hope for. It was just fantastic. So I'm lightening that up. We're gonna lighten this up a little bit, a little thicker. I want to leave myself enough time to really get into and get into the rocks. So I haven't done that. And I'm kind of, I got to watch it. So I'm at the 30 minute point, a little bit, probably 35 minutes. I'm cheating, giving myself a little extra time. Um, but I, cause I do want to be able to get into enough of those rocks to make them work and not put all my time just into this part of the water. We need to, this, at this point, there's that rock, there's that reflection of that rock. So I took a little asphaltum and white, pretty close. Maybe a little bit of blue into that. And it comes straight down. Boom. Over, a little darker. Maybe a little more, more asphaltum and blue. Just a touch darker. And we'll clarify that reflection. And I see a little bit of warmth in it. So I'm grabbing, grab some alizarin. Probably went too far with it, but I don't care. I kind of like it. Okay. And we get a little bit of it. So I'm mixing it down, diluted it a little bit and added a little bit of blue, diluted it with white, added a little bit of blue. And I want the pull that I have already in the lavender area, a little bit darker. Threw way too much uh, alizarin into it. Let's try it again. From about this point. And this gives the pull. This helps set up the ground plane. All right. So everything is a setup. Remember that. Everything is, bless you. Everything is a setup for what comes later. So kind of clear it, add a lot more yellow to it because as it goes into the reflection on the sand, this gets, and I'm gonna even throw a little ochre into that. Gets a lot more yellow. We're gonna go right here, even a little bit more ochre. And we're gonna bring it straight down from that part of the rock right there. All right. And then we're gonna let it diffuse into some of those other colors. So it's kind of, this is kind of a, I mixed a little bit of all the different colors, the blues, the browns into this and just kind of pulled it back to give some of those reflections. Step back, it's working okay. I, don't, I feel pretty good about it. Could I make it better? Absolutely, but I don't have time. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna overdwell on an area like that. Even though I, I know I could add a little bit more nuance to it. So we're going to move on down to kind of the, the off-white, yellowy, off-white color, which is about in here, maybe a little bit of coolness into that color. And we're going to start to bring it back. I'm going to add a little turp. And just only because I want the paint to thin out and flow up. There we go. It's weird because at the beginning of this, this looked like a, a relatively easy, quick painting, but because of the subtleties and nuances in this, it really starts to take on uh, a lot more involvement than you might think right off the bat. And I, I found that a lot of times when I do paintings, that sometimes when I think something is going to be just pretty easy and you're going to nail it, you get into it, and you realize, wow, there's a lot more going on here than I originally realized. So I'm going to get a little brighter and lighter right about here. So that's how I see it. And let it kind of fade as it goes over. Pick up some of those blues. So I'm mixing it right into that violet color they already have there.
feels pretty good. This feels like, like it might be a little dark, but I don't want to overdwell it, worry about it too much. Okay, let's leave that alone. We're going to work our way down, go back into the water one more time, at least for right now, just right here. And we're going to hit a stronger pull right here, and then a little bit, a lot more white into the color. I need some medium. The reason I need medium, I'm painting, I'm starting to paint into a very wet paint. The wetter paint that you paint into means you probably need to make the paint that you're applying even wetter. And the way you do that is with either turp or turp and medium. Now, if it's just turp, it doesn't work. But if it's turp and medium, yes. That's beginning to work. I'm beginning to see a little bit of pull right about here as it goes behind the rock and then pulls up and then get the splash that gets even brighter, which we'll put that in there at the end. So some of it's starting to work. This gets a little heavy. Let's start to get it. I'm, I'm gonna do the, this at the very end because it's close to the color I want, but I gotta get into those rocks. I cannot dwell any longer and avoid the rocks. I am gonna pick up the number 10 flat and I'm gonna start with a warmer color. So I'm gonna take Naples, a little burnt umber, and it's got a little violet into it too. I want two or three different varied colors to create the warms in the rocks. So I added some blue and brown, and this is kind of dry. That's pretty close to what I wanted. My God, did it again. Dry. The reason I want it dry, I want it to hit and miss. I don't want, I want, to, I want it to skip, so to speak. And because if I do that, I will come closer to creating the look of the kind of picky hills and valleys on the rock. So in this case, the dry paint can work for me. just by dragging my brush there. Now I can take it up here, it's a little, I want it dark enough to stand out against that wave right there, but, and I'm gonna firm the rock up. So now I've just pulled the rock before I had the splash in front of the rock. Now I've got the rock in front of the splash. Paint what's behind first. Again, this is where you use your color variation, a little bit of orange here and there as I see little color happen. And if I go too far in any one area, I can go back with the dark and the right. Remember, this is not as dark as I'm gonna go. I said that right at the beginning. Now we're gonna come up with our little lights, a little bit more kind of a dry brush, but a little bit more impasto. This is where you vary that, that texture, you vary uh, the pressure on the brush. You don't stay with the same pressure. And that's the advantage of working with a um, paint that's a little dry at this point is it's not gonna go down and like a big flat, it's gonna skip. And the skip, the skip is what's gonna give the textural aspect to the rock. I, every so often I'm stepping back, just you guys can't see me, but so, and how far am I stepping back? Well, it's an 18 by 24, what am I back? About six feet. Um, it just, it's, it's helpful, because then I see the painting as a whole, I don't see just the part that I'm picking on. I can't tell. You know, you, you assume you're doing right, but you, you don't know that. So it's, it's once again, you paint like you're doing everything, 100% correct. So I went a little dark now. I'm bringing some darks back in. You paint like you're doing 100% correct, but you might be off. And that's why I, I use that term, paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong. Because I, you, you have to have enough conviction when you start to put the paint down. If you don't, it just, it, it doesn't work. It just, you're, you're over 
concerned with the wrong things. So you want to paint with as much conviction as you possibly can. Meaning, pretend like it, you're painting really well. Okay? Trust yourself. If you're wrong, fix it, like I've always said. It's only wrong if you leave it. So I went cool now, because I see it get a little cooler. So what did I mix? I just threw a little bit of the lavender I had mixed up into that color. Step back, it's working okay. I need this one light, and that's right about here, right about there. So we're gonna, that's slightly warm, maybe a little bit more uh, Naples into it. And it's gonna come down right here. You're not gonna hit everything 100%. You just don't have the time. And, and you know what? You lose, there's a vitality to the paint. And I, I know I've used that word a few times, vitality. What do I mean by that? Um, I mean the feeling of paint. Now, if you're an ultra realist, you might sit there and render those rocks. You might spend a day or two and that might satisfy you. And you know that's completely an individual choice. You guys have to make that decision as to what you're after. Am I getting what I'm after? Do I want it to be neater? Um, I like painting to feel like paint. But I, I also like in tricking my viewer into thinking, look at that rock. And as Don Putman said, once when someone told him they thought he had painted a beautiful woman, he goes, no, no, no. You only think it's a beautiful woman. It's just a bunch of paint. You know, when I first heard that, probably 40 years ago, and you notice how it stayed with me, I still remember that. Now, there's some reflected light in here too, so I want to get a little bit of that started. Let's take, well, I've got that color before I do it. Let's take that same color and let's start to put some lights on this rock. Some warm lights, separate this rock from the back rock. The back rock has no light on it whatsoever because the water is really engulfing it. And I prefer to do all this stuff with a brush that feels way too large. Because then I don't overpick it. And when I was a younger art student, my tendency was to overpick. Because I always thought the more detail I put into something, the more perfect and refined I made it, the better it would be. And then I'd step back and it would be so stiff and lifeless. I was through looking at great art in museums and whenever I'd have shows and I'd go to galleries and I'd look at stuff that I went, you know, I wanna do something more like that. And so all of that kind of helps you realize what you wanna do with your art. Look at great art's best thing you can do. It really is. I'm gonna, I think this needs to light behind that rock more because I'm not pulling it out and I don't want to darken the rock. So I've added a little bit of a lighter color back behind it, we'll move it over down into some of these areas. And I, one of the things I found is if something is starting not to work, if I take and use, more of the broadness of my brush, I found I can actually come up with something that I feel better about. A little bit of a shadow on that rock back there. And it's right here. It's very blue. Again, it's, here's why it's blue. It's the reflection of the sky on white. And that's why that looks so blue back there. Over here. 
let's take this and push it back a little bit and take the warmth of it. Hopefully I'll have time to be, go back and fuss a little bit more. And a lot of these areas I could fuss on a lot more, a lot, but I wanna go back and I wanna get a little bit of this reflection. That reflection is very cold, but it's not blue. It's more of a blue gray violet. So what do I do? I mix up the blue, I mix up the alizarin, stays so. And if it goes too violet on me, I throw a little ochre into it and it mellows out because yellow being the complement. Let's give this a shot and see how it works. I think it's gonna be too red. Not too dark. I mean, it's too light. So I added more blue, a little less Fulton to it. That feels like a pretty good color. It still might be a little on the light side. No, that's pretty good. I need a little bit more light to help define that part of it. So I just throw a little bit of white back into it. We'll bring a little bit of texture right about here. And right about at this point, Okay, so we're painting what we call reflective light back into the shadow. Now, when I stand back, it works pretty good, but I do need to throw some more darks. So I'm gonna go ultramarine and umber and a little medium because I need it to stick. So let's see what happens when I really push darks. Okay, not enough. Still have enough, too much white in my paint. So let's, first let's do it here. Let's figure out the ground and we can paint back into some of these. Resculpt. I got a lot of light in that brush. If I were smart, I'd just pick another brush, but instead I'm cleaning the brush, which means I'm not that smart. Now, one of the things that I found when you, you can almost make stuff up at this point and say, oh, I want this to kind of come down and I want the, a deeper shadow, right? And that's one of the advantages of not going too dark too quickly. And same here, I go back, I'm gonna start to find the rock from the shadow on the ground. A little bit of a darker dark here. And we can go back into these areas. I can go back, I can make it bluer and go back and hit areas. And this is where you can kind of fuss forever until you get the feel that you're after. Okay, you gotta stand back for a second. It feels pretty good. Not as great, not as, as, as perfect as I would like it to be, but it feels okay. I wanna go just a tad darker now. Okay, we gotta, we gotta get into this. Let's a little bit on that, not too, too dark. Hate it when I do that. That feels better. So what happens is the tone that you end up, that I lay down initially becomes the mid tone. Initially you lay it down like it's a dark, knowing you can come darker. So I can give that rock, I can do the same thing with the, I got paint all over my face. Uh, not unusual with this rock. Just clarify it a little bit more. Okay. Let's leave it alone. So I want to. That rock looks really good. 
You notice I just complimented myself. Let's get this, let's get this water thing going a little bit. Um, we're gonna take the reflection of the sky and make it really white, which reflection of the sky is blue, right? So we're gonna, but we're gonna make it really white and we're gonna add it to begin with right here. We're gonna bring it all the way back to here. Bring it out here, up here. A lot of the busyness. Come along the edge. A little bit more blue into it. So we're going to move it into shadow. A little bit more blue. Don't want it to be quite as light and stand out because it is in shadow. Give it a little bit of the textural quality. A little bit more blue. It gets kind of pretty. Right about in here. Yep, went a little too dark. This is that, this is that uh, you're flirting with value. How far, how bright do I want to go with it? And you're, so you're guessing, you're stepping back, you're double checking. I haven't stepped back, but I'm trusting myself once again. Painting like I know what I'm doing and assume you're wrong. I just stepped back, I don't like what I just did. Uh, let's go with a little bit of green and the blue together in that color. Let's bring it right down. If I'm, nope, need more white. Let's try it again. That feels a little bit better. Not a lot better, just a little bit. That's working pretty good down in here. Pretty good. And that's all I can hope for right now for me, because I want to do two things I want to get into the ground and I want to put amplify the splash in the water. So a little bit more right about there, over there. A little bit right where it cuts down right about. And some pretty blue violets breaking back in here. Okay, let's stop it for a second. Okay, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the sand in and finish with the splash and some highlights on the rocks. So our sand is gonna be put in very quickly. We're gonna take maples, take ochre, Take medium, because I, I want it to go in quickly, a little bit of umber, and I'm going to test it. Not bad. It's not, it's pretty close to what I wanted. A little bit more umber. All right. That's what I'm going to start with right there. A little darker. I'm going to go a little more umber. There we go. A little darker, because as it right, as it kind of cozies up to this area right in here, we get a little bit of a darker edge. And the same here. So we hit them at the same time. So I'm, I'm just pushing that umber a little bit more each time. There we go, it feels pretty good. It has a little warmth to it too, so I threw a touch of orange into it. I'm just looking elsewhere to see it. All right, I'm going to mix the, all that together. We're going to add some turp, add some medium. And it's pretty good. More ochre, a little bit more Naples. By turp, you mean gamsol? Huh? By turp, you mean? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm saying turp, and I, I really don't mean turp. I'm literally using the uh, solvent free gel. 
So we're going to carve, recarve that cast shadow, recarve the edge of the rock. So at this point, I'm sharpening the edge. Okay, and I'm doing that because rocks are firm. Well, one thing I don't like, I have this shadow here and I have this shadow up here. So I'm gonna to need to change this part of it right here. I'm gonna to need to take that shadow and move it. Okay, so now it's shadows in the water. Keep going back to the sand. Let's do as quickly as possible so I can get into that splash. And we're cleaning up, giving that shadow a little bit more. And it warms up a little bit as it comes towards us. So I'm bringing just a touch of a cad orange into that color, a little bit more. This time I throw a lizard, probably too much. And I'm just kind of mixing them all together. It actually helps to do that because it doesn't feel like it's just too flat. Now we want to sharpen up the edge there and kind of clarify that shadow. Got a little bit of white into that color. And let's bring it over here, down. Okay, that's, and there's a little bit of a pull I see happening right at this point. So we're gonna kind of just go right down in here and just pull it and then, and then leave it. And as long as I'm doing that, let's put a few little darks pulls in the uh, puddle. Generally, they should be kind of warm um, I'm being lazy and just using whatever color I have. So we're going to hold that as is. Bring a little bit of that over here. Now, let's go back into the water. I'm going to go back to my clumsy brush. We're going to go with, this time I'm taking almost pure white. And I'm mixing medium into it. And making it really juicy. And there's a reason for it, pure white going right back into the color. Now I can use pure white because I'm mixing it into the color that's already there. So it's it may start out as pure white, but by the time I mix it down into all these areas, it becomes closer to the uh, overall color that is right there in the beginning. So we just, you now what you're doing is you're amplifying the brights. And we're going to do it over here for sure because it's really gets bright over there. So there it is more medium. I'm using the medium so that I can lay the paint down on the wet paint. To concentrating quiet. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm very quiet now, aren't I? It's because I'm towards the end and I'm trying to make this thing come together and work. So again, I know what I'm going to do is take that white. I'm going to go back into this way, way right back here, and we're going to push just really so delicately. Oh, I just said delicately and I blew it. Uh, Okay, I'm going to take that, this little number eight that I've got, and use that instead. 
I to use small brushes, but I think because I want, but I still want to use it in such a way where I'm not laying it down really strong. And as it crests over here, we get a stronger pull. Again, that area back behind, it's got that beautiful blue green. So I have to carve down on it, bring that down a little bit. I'm gonna step back for a second. I wanna see how this is shaping up. It's okay. It doesn't knock me out, but it's okay. I wanna push the bright here. Oh, I messed that rock up, didn't I? There we go. I'll fix it with that damn finger. I don't mean to be cursing my finger, but. Mm. It's amazing how the paint underneath is already kind of setting up. It's, it really is. It's kind of shocks me because I use so much medium and if the medium, somebody asked me if the medium is like liquid. The answer is yeah, it's, it's setting up pretty quick. I'm just looking for what I might need to really refine this piece and make it really work. It's working okay. Splashes are truthfully, they're not as good as I had hoped. But for a quick one, I guess I could say they're good enough. Now, if, you, if you're painting plain air, you probably have another hour or so that you could probably work on this. Usually I say two and a half hours is about what I can get out of a plain air piece. Um, not always, sometimes it's less. Um, but at some point the light changes a lot and it's really hard to get a lot more out of it. Uh, the one thing I will say about it is when you're painting something like this, what changes is the light on the water and on the rocks. So the light on the rocks change faster than the light on the water. And so if you're doing something like this plain air, I usually recommend to get, nail those rocks down. And I might put a few more little lights on the rock right before we finish and call it pretty much a, a fait de complete. Well, using your French. What's that? Using your French. My bad French. My daughter would be appalled. <laughs> Sasha, if you're listening, I'm sorry, I screwed the French up. <laughs> Maybe she's listening. She tunes in every now and then. You know, you got to remember she's there in Paris. So it's eight hours later. So I'm always amazed when I find out she was watching and flattered, not just amazed. Just try to get this water a bounce and a movement. Sand is okay. It doesn't knock me out. I feel like I could. So I'm, I'm going to give myself to, 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 to about two more minutes. I'm going to take white and we're going to start to amplify a little bit on the rocks. Some of the some of the brighter areas of the rocks. Because we do want a little variation. We want some areas to feel like they're receiving the light more directly. Like in here we get, and this is where it's really good if your paint's kind of dry. Because you want it to kind of skip on, on the surface. It's a fun thing for me to try to do. 
I, I've been thinking about this, doing this painting for a few weeks. I, I, to, so this morning when I was looking at this and a few other pieces, um, I said, I'm gonna give it a shot. You know, I try not to paint, you guys, I've talked to you about this before. I try not to paint the same subjects over and over uh, because I don't, these are not pieces that I'm necessarily looking at for a show. These are pieces I'm kind of doing, hopefully to give you a little bit of information as to how you might better your own painting. So that's, that's I would say if there's a goal in this, it's that I paint enough varied subjects and very types of lighting so that you can take whatever information I'm kind of doling out and hopefully use it or discard it, depending on you know what's happening with your own painting. Um, some instances I know it'll be helpful, and in other instances, probably is going to be. If nothing else, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do because it's fun for me, which is the bottom line, everybody. I'm going to finish by using this. Painting, people get into painting, generally, not to become millionaires. People get into painting because it's fun. They've enjoyed it. They get something. There's a gratification that occurs. All right? Don't lose that. Don't lose that gratification because it's very important. It'll keep you painting for the rest of your life. It'll keep you improving for the rest of your life. If you lose that gratification, um, painting becomes work. It becomes labor. Uh, not that painting, I don't wanna make painting sound easy. It's not. And I think most of you that paint a lot that have watched any of these things realize that it's hard. It's just damn hard work. Um, so keep all that in mind, enjoy, the process. And I used to tell, I taught a, uh, a class when I was teaching at Art Center. I used to use this more in an illustration class than I did a painting class. But I'm going to give you the line enjoy the process because you won't always enjoy the results. <laughs> All right. That's as true with painting as it is with illustration. The, the same thing. Sometimes you're going to try, if you paint the same kind of thing over and over again, you're probably going to get really good at it. If you bounce around, uh, and the one when you're first learning, you bounce around just strictly so you can learn what you like doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you bounce around like I do, sometimes it comes out and you're really happy with it. And sometimes it goes, eh, almost, you know, and, but I learned something. I enjoyed doing it. I learned something. and. That's why we do this, why I do it. Been doing it now for, God, I don't want to say, 50, over 50 years. So that makes me 55. Okay. Uh, don't like that last thing I put in there, by the way. So what do you do? You fix it that way. <laughs> Magic finger one more time. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. It came out okay. Uh, parts of what I like, what I have found in a lot of these is when I look at them the next day, I like them better than I did when I first finished them. So hopefully that'll happen with this. All right. I'm going to go have lunch. You guys have a great weekend. Uh, next weekend, uh, I know for a fact I'm going to be painting pumpkins. So other than that, you guys, once again, have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Uh, I think Judy's on today, so I want to appreciate uh, what she puts into this. She helped you decide what to paint today. Yeah, she actually, Judy actually helped me with decide to paint. So thank you, Judy. And you guys can, if you don't like what I did, you blame Judy, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Judy. <laughs>